Hello, everybody. It is that time. I wanted to use this opportunity to get a few things mentioned that uh, I'm probably not going to be mentioning anytime soon. I also want to talk about the definitive plan going forward for the channel. And I also really hope that I can work around all the construction that's happening directly above our apartment because even though they've been renovating that place for weeks and have been quiet for the, pl for the past couple of weeks, uh, they decided to start hammering and filing away again tonight, so... Uh... Thank you, that was perfect timing. I'm gonna do my best to work around it, but uh, you'll probably end up getting some really obnoxious background noise because that's what it's been in our lives for the past several weeks. At least the road crew outside went away and stopped turning off our water randomly. Okay, so first, the stuff to talk about. Most important thing, the biggest thing that I want to talk about right now is Kingdom Cyclonus. <laughs> So, Kingdom Cyclonus. Now, I got this guy off of GameStop's website. Uh, last I checked, they were sold out again, but he has been popping in and out of stock for the past week or so. So, if you're looking for one, I'd suggest check their site again. He's also up for pre-order in a lot of different places, but if you want to get him now, there's a chance GameStop might get him back in stock in the near future. So, the reason I want to talk about Kingdom Cyclonus is, um, this toy is amazing. I'm saying that as someone who does not give a single crap about Cyclonus as a character or ever cared about any of his toys. I was curious about Universe Cyclonus, but I never got around to getting him. Other than that, I never really cared, but I got this figure because I had $15 worth of credit to use on GameStop, so I effectively was able to get him for $15, bucks, and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And he's actually remarkably good. He feels solid. The coloring, the paint is really nice. The transformation is actually brilliant. Like, there's not really a whole lot of kibble on this guy. He doesn't really have gaps that everyone loves to complain about. Like, yeah, he's got a couple on the backs of his thighs, but that's because those gaps are necessary for the transformation. Everything is extremely solid on this guy, and he's really fun to mess with. And we were talking about this on the Discord, apparently people have been saying, uh, like, various people, not just on the Discord, but like across the internet, have been saying that this might be the best Transformers mainline Voyager that we've gotten since uh, Generation Springer. Granted, I haven't bought a ton of toys compared to a lot of other collectors since Springer, but uh, I'm inclined to agree with that. So basically I just wanted to say, uh, if you have the opportunity to get Cyclonus, get Cyclonus. Also, if you watched my recent Top 10 Toy Acquisitions video of 2020, which you can check out there if you haven't, I hope you do, because I actually put a lot of work into it. <laughs> but you might have seen a brief cameo from this guy, the uh, Top Gun mashups Maverick figure. And uh, I got him pretty much because I really liked the look of the robot mode. I thought the jet, the jet mode looked great. The engineering actually looked really interesting. I thought the transformation looked cool. But the deco on this guy, subjectively terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Like, they've got some really nice tampa graphs here and there, but like there's nothing on him. It's just like one big dirt smear, and it looks absolutely awful. But I wanted to get him because I thought it'd be fun to do, you know, kind of a custom thing on him. Try to make him look more acceptable. As just as a toy, he's actually really good. Like everyone's been not everyone, but like I've seen people complaining about him and saying that, you know, it doesn't feel right, the plastic feels cheap, and stuff like that. I don't agree with any of that. The engineering's actually really clever. The only problem that I really have with the engineering is it's, like, this little panel in the front here. It just kind of, like, it doesn't lock in in a position. But the hinge is stiff enough that it stays where it is. Like, if you poke it, it's not going to move. I've heard so many people say that he feels cheap, and it's like... He really doesn't. I don't know if I just got a later run and they changed the plastic or something, but like, the plastic feels different than what they've been using in Siege and Earthrise and stuff like that, but it feels better, in my opinion. It feels more solid. It feels denser. I don't get why people are complaining about the feeling of the plastic quality when, to me at least, it feels better than what we've already gotten. But anyway, the reason I wanted to talk about this guy is because, uh, not just that I think he's actually a pretty darn good toy in his own right, once you look past the absolutely abysmal deco, but 
I panel lined him and that has made a massive difference. Bringing him in a little bit closer so that he's not completely washed out, you can kind of see that there's panel lining all over him and that it just makes those details pop. And even though it doesn't technically add any real color, like it's not repainting anything, just having the more densely packed black lines all over the place give the plane and the robot kind of like a darker tone feel. And it just works so much better. Like, I'm not saying they should have done this in the first place, because if they had done this in the first place, that's why it probably would cost way more than it already does. But if you're thinking about getting it and the deco is putting you off and you have the uh, ability to panel line, then I think it makes it worth it. You wanna say hi, honey? Wanna say hi? She's purring. She's purring a lot, actually. Oh, now you don't wanna leave? I guess, uh, are you gonna hang out? With me in the video? I appreciate you making this appearance, at least, even if you don't hang around. Uh oh. Okay, hi. I'm glad you all get to see this. <laughs> Cat hair went up my nose. While we're on the subject of jets turning into cool looking robots, I also picked this up off of eBay. It's the Macross 7 DX VF17S Stealth Valkyrie. This is an older toy, so it's I think like 90s maybe. It's a more limited articulation, but at the same time, it's chunky and it feels good. The Utterly Peerless TJ Omega was uh, selling some stuff on eBay, and this was one of the things he had listed, and it was kind of like, okay, he's selling stuff because he wants to, you know, get money for other stuff. I don't do the Patreon thing, really, so I feel like, oh, I could support him by buying this. And uh, I'm genuinely shocked by just how much I love this thing. It's, as I said, it's a simpler toy, but in a way that adds to my to my love of it. It's got a really cool kind of color palette, the style is cool, the head is really neat, and it's a really simple but satisfying and chunky transformation. The girl walk mode is not great, <laughs> but that's fine. Like, the jet mode and the batroid mode are fantastic, and I, I love this thing. It's also much bigger than I thought it was going to be. This guy and Kingdom Cyclonus, if I had gotten them in before recording the top 10 toy acquisitions of 2020 video, they would have shaken things up in that list. I'm telling you that right now. Unfortunately, due to wanting to get that out before the new year, uh, I just had to make that video before they showed up. I'm tentatively putting together a spreadsheet for next year. Whether or not I actually do anything with that, I don't know. We'll, we'll cover that more when we talk about the future of the channel. But uh, I do want to say for certain that uh, if these guys had come in before I made that list, they would be on the list and they would be in the top five. Cyclonus, probably number one. And last for stuff in general that I just wanted to talk about, uh, I got the Netflix spoiler pack Nemesis Prime. And uh, wow, this guy comes with a lot of accessories that I just do not care about. I really wanted to get this guy because I've been wanting to get the Takara version of Siege Nemesis Prime for a really long time, and the aftermarket prices on that thing are absolutely ridiculous. So getting a slightly grayish in tone Nemesis Prime that's like a slightly different color scheme uh, for 60 bucks, then it comes with a trailer and a ton of other accessories. Yeah, I'll do that. Because I really like the Siege Optimus Prime mold, but as I think I've said in the past, Optimus Prime is boring. He's a good dad kind of guy, but, uh, you know, as compared to, say, Nemesis or Megatron or Starscream, he's just not as interesting. And so getting an Optimus Prime toy, because Optimus Prime always gets the best toys, in a much more interesting color scheme is very appealing to me. So yeah, having this just makes me happy. I'm glad I finally got a Nemesis Prime version of the uh, Siege Optimus Prime mold, so that was the thing that made me happy this year. Oh, guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> so as for the future of the channel, yeah, sorry for so much preamble, but now that I know how to do the timestamps along the, uh, the navigation bar, if you wanted to know right, right away, skip all that other stuff, you could just skip straight to this part. As for the future of the channel, um, 
I did a lot of thought and deliberation about my decision that I made the announcement for uh, about a month ago, which you can check up there if you want to see what I was talking about. After a lot of deliberation, I decided uh, I'm I'm still not cool with making videos for YouTube because YouTube is a garbage platform run by garbage people who promote garbage people and uh, don't care at all about not garbage people. Don't use a script. What do you want from me? So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm still going to go ahead with my plan to do the, uh, the Instagram focus where I do like smaller probably under a minute long videos for Instagram, but I decided that since I'm already making the videos, it would make sense to upload them here. Because, you know, you all, for the most part at least, I imagine, are still subscribed. I don't imagine you turn up your nose at uh, there being new videos every now and then. Um, it just probably won't be the kinds of videos that you're used to. Because, you know, I'm not going to be making videos for YouTube anymore. And I've kind of tested the waters a little bit. Uh, you may have seen some of the videos that have gone up recently that were very short. There was the one about uh, Earthrise Ratchet, uh, the one with uh, Tightening Cybertron Sideways Hips, and the one that just went up earlier this week, which was uh, painting Siege Spinister's guns, which is something I've been wanting to do for a really long time, so I'm glad I finally got to do that. But uh, yeah, that's kind of, I guess, what you can expect going forward, is me doing short-form videos like that, um, intended for Instagram, but still uploading them for YouTube so you all can check them out. And it's not just going to be, uh, like, painting and maintenance type stuff. I do intend to do, I don't want to say proper, and I don't want to say reviews, because I never consider anything that I do a review. They're art critiques. <laughs> and I say it because, like, I know it sounds pretentious, that's kind of the, the whole joke. But I do intend on doing uh, figure critique critique videos on Instagram. And so essentially it's just going to be a different format that is not specifically made or intended for YouTube. But I figure, like I said, if I'm making the videos, I may as well share them. So if you don't like those videos, that I've been- the shorter form videos that I've been doing, uh, I'm sorry. All I can say is hopefully you'll like the ones that I do that are more about the figure itself and not just about, like, painting or, like, fixing things on them. If not, you know, I understand everyone's got their own thing. Everyone, uh, likes different stuff. But that is the plan going forward. I feel like I'm going to be talking in circles again, but, you know, I, like I said, I feel like if I'm making the videos already, why not share them with you all, too? So, that is the plan. Something kind of almost melancholy about transforming the duck tank into Spartan proper. He's been in tank mode for so long. Getting weirdly emotional about it. But, yes, uh, so throughout this year, the channel will not be dead. It just will be different and the videos that do get uploaded will be much shorter than usual. Probably longer than the sub one minute standard of Instagram because I have the ability to make the videos on YouTube a little bit longer, but they'll probably still be extremely short. I don't know what the schedule's gonna be like. It's basically just gonna be whenever I feel like making a video, whenever inspiration strikes and I have the opportunity to film it uh, and then put it all together, that's gonna be when it happens. So it's not gonna be the regular schedule that it's been Hopefully you all won't hate them. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody, for sticking with me this long. I do not begrudge anyone who decides to not stick with me anymore with how the channel's dr changing so drastically. But, you know, if you want to stick around, that's also cool. I appreciate that as well. Like I said in the last couple of videos, uh, hopefully this year will treat us all much better than last year did. So this isn't so much a goodbye as a, uh, things are changing, but, uh, you know, still gonna be around. And I hope you all continue to stay safe, because, uh, you know, just because 2020 is over doesn't mean that everything else is over just yet. Uh, but we made it this far. We can make it a little further, I imagine. All right, I think I'm out of stuff to say, so I will see you all around for now, uh, but I'll be back. Kitty bomb! All right, I figured since we're uh, kind of wrapping up the year, might as well finish it up with uh, one last look at how the collection stands right now. Of course, there are things in the mail because holiday season, so lots of irresponsible spending on my part. But this is where things are right this moment, right at the tail end of 2020. Starting off with the big boy shelf, we've got the combiners that I've got. Unique Toys Orden, which is still just fantastic, and now has Reaper labels on him. Studio Series Devastator, which I already talked about at length, but is also pretty great in his own right. And Ocular Max Assaultus, which also great. It's my small, but I think pretty worthwhile, shelf of combiners. Underneath that, got my non-transforming, well, for the most part non-transforming figures things. Technically, uh, technically this guy does transform. There we've got the Astrobots Apollo with the uh, add-on pack thing, Marvel Legends Spider Gwen, the Amazing Yamaguchi Spider Gwen, or Marvel Legends Gwen rather, and the, the Amazing Yamaguchi Spider Gwen, the uh, McFarlane Space Marine hiding back there, Lightning Collection Ranger Slayer, custom pop vinyl Godzilla cosplayer that Diana made for me for I Model Drift. Uh, I forget the official name of this one, but it's a, the somewhat recent figure arts uh, Ultraman. Now, uh, this thing is a Gundam model kit that Diana got me for Christmas, and I spent Christmas Day kind of detailing and putting it together. I forget the name of it, but uh, it's pretty neat and also silly, and I really like it. Back here, we've got uh, Storm Collectibles Cyborg Smoke and Figma Samus from Metroid Prime 3. And then down here are my Star Wars Black Series figures, uh, the Armorer and the Mandalorian in Beskar, both from the Mandalorian. Semi-custom Sabine Wren with the uh, new head that Diana painted for me. And then in the back there I've got Captain Rex, and he's wearing a cloak that actually belongs to Astrobot's Apollo. Yeah, moving down... Hi! You wanna say hello? Say hi? So moving down from there... Still have my Master Maid Apollo, as well as the uh, Mech Fans Toys Mini Sentry, I think it's called. It's basically a tiny Omega Supreme, and I love that thing. It's so tiny. Make Toys Thunder Erebus, and Make Toys Rider Despatron hiding right behind him. There's the Mech Fans Toys Xylong uh, Submersible, and the Stealth Valkyrie that I just talked about. The G1 Bumblebee, the one that started it all. It's uh, hard to see him back there, but Machine Robo, Steam Robo, Power Master Optimus Prime, and uh, you might notice the very shiny fellow behind Power Master Optimus Prime. That is right, I got my hands on Goldran. Brave of Gold, Goldran. It's just Goldran, though. I don't have the other two bots to make uh, whatever the ultimate guy is called, but I'm okay with that. I kind of like just having Goldran. Goldran is a new, new acquisition, so... Further down, Masterpiece style shelf, got Masterpiece G2 Sideswipe, Ocular Max Azalea Alternative, the one in like the more kind of, I guess, comic booky colors? I don't know. Uh, Fans Toys Grinder, DX9 Terror hiding in the back there, Planet X Vulcan, uh, Iron Factory Burning Slug, I believe, the Make, make Toys, the uh, Magic Square video team down there. Hiding in the back there is the Magic Square Light of Freedom Nemesis, and the Generation Toy Nemesis Opex, Fans Toys Road King, their Motormaster, uh, Masterpiece Soundwave, Unique Toys Gazranka, or their Swindle, and then in the middle there we've got the uh, 
Fans Project Parallax Armor, I believe. I believe it's Parallax Armor, but the Fans Project Armor Upgrade for uh, Classics Optimus Prime. And then going down one more level, here is the Mastermind Creations shelf. I'm gonna try to get some more light down here. Also, now that I've got more light going, let's just pan across this shelf where things are a little bit easier to see. And down here, too. Ever so slightly easier to see. Okay. So, for Mastermind Creations, we've got Spartan, or uh, Bexo Promenon, aka Batman. Uh, hiding way in the back there, <laughs> and it's very hard to see, is Dicamus and Turban, their Whirl, Nitro, Megatron, Tyrantron, I believe is what they're calling him, Commodus, their Turmoil, uh, Titanica, their Strika. Altios, very difficult to see back there. I really need to get a flashlight for this. <laughs> That's their rat bat. Uh, you can just barely make out Coulter in the back there. Tarn and uh, Deadlock. Aether Beta, their Deadlock. Okay, so that is this entire thing. So going up and across. Now we've got the next section with Fans Hobby's Double Evil Overlord. Uh, Perfect Effects, Nemesis Gorira, Fans Hobby's uh, Arch Enemy, their masterpiece-ish Robot Scourge. Here we've got all of the Cyberverse customs that I've been working on throughout the year. Megatron, Soundwave, Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, Hammerbite, Hot Rod, Grimlock, RC, Thunderhell, Macadam, Clobber, Cheetor. And then for R.I.D. we've got mm -hmm. Scorponok and... Why am I drawing a blank? Fracture. Did not do any customizing on Scorponok Fracture. And then Diana got me this little, uh, little teeny cutesy Cyberverse Grimlock as like a sort of play around with custom project. So can do something with him eventually. And moving over, we've got the big bookcase that has a bunch of miscellaneous stuff on the top, which I'm not going to go over. And then the uh, more classic stuff like Cybertron Optimus Prime, Cybertron Downshift, Cybertron Defense Scattershot, Armada Tidal Wave, Henke Megatron, Cybertron Galvatron, but he looks more like Megatron to me, and then Cybertron Sideways. Down below that is a shelf that is basically just empty for now until I can expand into it. Then we've got all of our Tobots, Tobot Cargo, Tobot Terracle. Tobot Athlon Metron, Tobot Adventure Z, Tobot Zero, then Carbots. Lots of Carbots. There's Pony Meister, Follow, Super, not Super Patron, Patron S, Zetron. Back there we've got Sky Swat, and uh, Sonar Diver, and then I got the uh, black repaint version of Hawk, which is a bit of a junker. It's missing a lot of stuff, but I figure I can restore him to at least a little bit and kind of play around with customizing. And for Tobots, this is all the Tobot V stuff. That's why this is separate from this. So all the Tobot V stuff, we've got Master V with all of his combined stuff. Gigant Saver, or Saber. Big Troll, Captain Jack, and Classic. And then one shelf down from that, we've got my large Hello Carbots and also the one non-Carbot or Tobot that I've got now. So we've got Hello Carbot Pentastorm X, Hello Carbot Pentastorm, the original one, and then turning mech card HG Griffix. And moving over from that, this is where I've been keeping Cybertron Primus. Then some miscellaneous Titans Return, Power of the Prime stuff. Where we've got uh, Chrome Dome, Power of the Primes, Leader Class Optimus Prime. I still really like that toy. And then the Titans Return Monster Bots. Twin Inferno in the middle there is actually Double Cross. That's the Takara Legends version. Repugnus and Grotusk are the regular Hasbro versions. All with repro labels. A couple of them have been painted. And we've got Universe Nemesis Prime, the Nemesis Prime Repaint Big Convoy. Transformers Prime Soundwave, Transformers Prime First Edition Starscream, both customized. Then Alternators Grimlock, Generations Cosmos, though that's actually the Transformers Adventures Adams figure, it's not technically Cosmos. Transformers Collectors Club Depth Charge, a repaint of, oh, what was Terra Dive, I believe is the name of the original figure. And then Animated RC, so that is all of that. And then up here, 
is where I've got all of the Siege, Earthrise, and upcoming Kingdom figures. So we've got Smokescreen, Ratchet, Ultra Magnus, Double Dealer with the Spy Patrol. I'm trying very hard not to block the light. <laughs> Rotor Storm, Generations Rhinox, which I know is not technically part of this, but you know, if we're putting Beast Wars stuff up here, or we'll be putting Beast Wars stuff up here, I figure I might as well move them there now. Earthrise Optimus Prime, Power of the Prime Slash. I specifically have Power of the Prime Slash here because I also got Kingdom Vertebrae. I just think they look neat together. Uh, Earthrise Skywarp, along with these two guys who I do not remember the name of at all currently, but I think they make a nice color matchy sword. Siege Spinister with the very large, perfect effect sword there. I just think it looks cool. And there's Kingdom Cyclonus, and you can kind of see with Cyclonus next to Skywarp, he's very big for a Voyager. For a modern Voyager, I should say. And we've got Ape Face, Snapdragon, the Toy Deco Colors Reflector up there, and then Netflix Nemesis Prime. And of course, Earthrise Scorponok and all of his massiveness. So that is kind of how that shelf is looking currently. Below Scorponok, we've got the Mashups shelf, which is only two figures currently, and it's the only two I really want right now, but I feel like this is probably going to grow over time. But we've got Maverick and Gigawatt, and the reason I have them there is because this segues into the movie toys. So it's kind of like this bridge of regular Transformers into regular Transformers that are meant to homage movies into the actual movie bots. So down here we've got New Age Mista, uh, Unique Toys Peru Kill, Studio Series Blitzwing, and then the little Ravage that came with Mista, or Mista. And below that are the Autobots with Unique Toys Challenger, the 3A Deluxe Bumblebee, the X9 Lahire, I believe? Pretty sure it's Lahire. It was Hot Fire was the crap one, yeah, so Lahire. And then Studio Series Jeep Bumblebee. I'm intending to do some painting on him, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And lastly, up here we've got the Sentai shelf with the Giant Saber, Space Deleter, Mecha, just the first two. I got rid of Uranus Saber because the final combination was so big I thought this looked cooler. So it's like, you know, to save space, I just kind of stuck with these two. There's the Super Mini Plot of the Astro Delta Megazord. Still love that thing. There's uh, Wolkaiser from Maji Ranger, the uh, Titan Megazord from Mystic Force, also still one of my favorites. And then, don't remember the name of this combination, but it's a uh, Daikaio combined with Ika Origami, I believe. Also love that one. And that is the entirety of the, uh, no, it's so hard not to block the light, <laughs> but that is the entirety of the toy collection as it stands right now. And it will also, of course, be changing as time goes by because I will, as always, be shuffling things around, selling things, buying new things. And yeah, it's ever-changing, but that's where we're at. <laughs>